In today's video, I couldn't be any more excited to have Dominique Casey here with me in our office here in Dallas to go through a few special things he brought with him to show us. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. So we just finished up the final delivery of the second pair of shoes you made for me, Dominique. An absolutely beautiful brown suede semi-brogue. They fit beautifully, they're impeccable. I couldn't be any more happy with these shoes. I'm wearing them now. And yep. uh, yeah, thank you Glad so much for coming to Dallas, great. you know? Yep. And it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to welcome you here to Texas. Yeah. So thanks well, for coming. Well, I know that you always like to talk about shoes. Yes. And well, you always like to have something a bit interesting, a bit unusual. So when I knew I was coming down, I thought what I need to do is just actually prepare something just for us to actually talk about. Yeah. Something interesting that maybe people don't see a lot of. Yeah. Well, I know so every I, single time I've seen you in this beautiful, you know, shoemaker satchel you, you carry, there's always been something Some surprises, exciting yeah. and interesting in here. So I can't wait to see exactly. you know, what you have for us. This is actually the same bag you brought my two shoes in. Yep. But they had some good company. They've got some good company, yeah. And I know that you like it's like um an in, you're like an infant in the <laughs> yeah, nature table. Right, you yes. know, come on, show me the yeah, smartest. Yeah, it's like let's see what we have here. So these are not finished shoes. And I thought what we'd do is I'd bring some samples of some unfinished, the way that I think about designing a shoe, okay. design about making a shoe, and the way that we actually, the process as much as anything else. So these are the beginnings of some bespoke shoes and some bespoke samples. And the idea for me was to actually think about making some summer or lightweight summer shoes that we probably haven't seen for many years in, in many ways. And so this is a very classic style of an open weave shoe. So it's Spanish woven leather in the front. Um, the weave's all open so the actual air penetrates the foot when you're walking. And it's just got a kind of classic cream upper at the back. So this is, um, and what's kind of interesting about that is that it's completely open on the inside wow. here. So it's just, um, it has a mud guard running around the outside here, which just gives it some strength and is going to give the shoe some support. But essentially it's designed to be a, a summer shoe, really. And these are vintage it, models. I mean, yeah, these are vintage, vintage models. I mean, I've got a pair of those which is 30 years old. This is a classic kind really? of 50s and 60s and you still type wear styling thing. I still wear the, What's the it one, it's, just, it's, it's actually black. Okay. This you can buy, get the woven leather in maybe black, navy, and Brown. this kind of cream color. Yeah. So you can uh, put it together in a way, there's a really kind of classic 50s one with a cream front and a black back to it. Oh, wow. So it just is, it's the kind of shoe that if you're sitting by the pool or on the beach, it just really gives you a chance to wear something much more light and much yeah. more flexible. And with a nice pair of socks, I mean, this would be incredibly comfortable. Yeah, I think the one thing about these kind of summer shoes, it's about, as a shoemaker, you need to build them lightweight and flexible. Mm -hmm. And so it's a much more casual kind of dressing, light linen suits, yeah. casual trousers, you know, cocktails you, by the pool and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, how would you make the shoe differently, maybe with a slightly a softer outsole. Softer outsole, you might even put a rubber, micro rubber sole on it to make okay. it really light, soft and flexible with a spongy side. So you'd welt it all the way round, mm -hmm. very, very thin middle sole, and then a micro sole EVA heel to actually give you some cushioning and some support. Gosh, I mean this is, so, you know, whenever you reach this point in your bespoke shoes, you know, you really know that you've built, you've, yeah. you're, at you're kind going of at into the your, tail yeah. end, you know, yeah. you've really, you've got, you know, or you've got all your main models. Yeah. You don't see anybody, nobody's going to come to a shoemaker and say, make me this yeah, as this my first. first shoe. That's never going to be anybody's first but shoe. But what I love about this but, is how it really showcases, uh, really, I feel like the most interesting aspect of bespoke shoemaking, which is the fact that you can have really unique, you know, a total, mm. totally singular models like this made that you would never find anywhere else. Exactly. So if you were living in a tropical country, this is the kind of thing that would be your first port of call as a bespoke customer. You'd be having your lightweight linen suits made yeah. for you, your lightweight super fine trousers and what have you, and wearing more open shoes and in different colors yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, well, and a gentleman back Classic. then certainly would be still dressing in proper over-the-calf socks. Yeah. Not with, uh, you know, barefoot or with no socks. And so yeah. this, you know, with a fine pair of socks, it's still going to be comfortable against the skin. Yeah. Even though it's totally opened and unlined. And what I love about this, 
especially is that, I mean, it's just so beautiful, but it's a great example of the things that you can only find in bespoke. I mean, something like this you would never find ready to wear in a store. Mm -hmm. But you know, through a bespoke maker like you, and Dominic, one of the things I really appreciate about uh, you is you've got a particular interest in some of these vintage models. Yeah. And so a lot of the models that I've seen, a lot of your samples are, are kind yeah. of throwbacks to a, the bygone era of mm. a really truly bespoke lifestyle that was more than just city dressing. Yeah, exactly. People used to have their riding boots made, they'd have their house shoes made, they'd have their tropical shoes made, yeah. their, you know, the Grand Tour shoes made. So people were living that kind of bespoke yeah. lifestyle. So whenever I'm on Mystique it's, Island, you know, with uh, you know the royal family, you know, yeah, this is we'll, the type of shoe exactly. I need we'll to be, be wearing. wearing those, won't yeah. we? Yes, we'll be wearing those, or maybe we'd be wearing one of these. Okay. Well, what else? Uh, yeah, we've so, only seen one. Again, this is uh, inspired really by the 1930s classic. Um, this is a perforated shoe, so um, it's a classic Oxford. Basically, it's inspired by the designers. It's actually a, a, a semi cap capped Oxford with a medallion on it with the Oxford cut on it but it's just got holes punched all the way through it. <laughs> now this came from really I saw something in the 30s, 20s and 30s these were very popular types of shoes. Really? And um, the thing about them is when you actually walk and you flex your foot uh, the air gets kind of pumped through the shoe. Yeah, especially so the bespoke the, shoe you it, get so much. Exactly you get that so much flexing so it actually kind of keeps your Foot cool, and you actually feel a draft coming through your foot there. So this is lined, so but again, peripheral. It's lined. All so the, the secret about this is you need to make a shoe which is reasonably stiff. Mm -hmm. So the lining here is attached to the upper there. Um, the stitching goes all the way through to actually hold it together, and that's what gives it the structure. And that's mm. what holds it, the fact that the lining and the upper are joined together. And then the holes in whatever decoration you want get punched all the way through. And that's what kind of gives it the ventilation. So again, it's a kind of shoe that you might wear in the summer, in the tropics, in a warm country. And again, just to wear with lightweight looking clothes. And the other thing about this type of leather is I probably wouldn't polish it. Really? So you wouldn't really put that, I wouldn't have put that onto a high shine. I'd yeah. literally use, leave it that kind of matte, and dusty colour. I mean, it's a lovely colour in, in, in the context of um, those kind of areas. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine how comfortable this would be. Yeah, and it's just a lightweight shoe. So the reason why there's no punching holes <clears throat> in the back of this, just in terms of shoemaking and structure, is that the actual stiffening would actually go up through the back here, Kirby. Okay. So the leather stiffener would go in there. So this area isn't punched at all. So it's just going to hold the back of the shoe. And then the rest of the shoe is just designed to be soft and flexible. Yeah. But by stitching the upper and the lining together, and it gives it just enough resilience yeah. to hold And you it. wouldn't put any stiffener in the toe cap? I might put a very it. light toe cap in. Exactly, and then punch, punch through, through the toe cap. Yeah, yeah. so there was actually, so that it way, wasn't as hard yeah. as the ones that we normally put in, mm -hmm. but then just punch through it as well, and then that's going to. Um, and where were you? Give I, mean, you some I mean, where did what did you? Were you reading a book or? How I was. You? Well, I'm always interested in sort of 1920s, you know, the classic age of dressing, but we don't live in that age anymore. So what it's nice to do is to actually interpret them mm -hmm. for modern people and people who. Um, you know, for our modern styling, yeah. but be inspired by things that you actually see in the past. Yeah. Um, and so finally, while we're on colour, this is the one that's going to, is slightly alarming. Um, <laughs> well, it's a classic, uh, it's just a completely classic um, casual shoe really, um, but it's made in sky blue pigskin. Why not? Um, which again is a everyone colour that a looks really like, and, and, and like all, everyone needs a pair, yeah, where, where, where can't you wear sky blue <laughs> pigskin, yeah. But again, unlined shoe, so that's designed to be soft so and flexible. So it's a classic penny loafer, but it classic doesn't penny have loafer. structure. It's got no structure to it, so it's unlined. Having said all of that, it's got a lot of shoemaking design in it, okay. which gives it structure. So this beading running around the top there, I mean, it's there for a reason. It's there so that that shape is always maintained, so mm -hmm. it's just stiff enough to actually maintain the shape of the shoe. 
if it was just uh, a single layer of the pig skin, mm -hmm. it would be too collapsible and too flexible. Yeah. Um, things like this extra counter stitched on the back here give to you two layers of pig skin at the back, and it just means that you can put a light stiffener up the back there mm -hmm. in that pocket, and then that's going to hold the back of the loafer. So yeah. there's some design in there that's going to give you some structure. And then probably on the front, I would have just put a very light toe puff just on the front here, yeah. just to actually hold the front of the well, shoe I love in. the, uh, the hand-sewn apron too. Yeah, classic hand-sewn apron. It's a very classic um, shoe design that we've seen all the time, but just making it unlined with a pigskin which is stiff enough to actually hold itself together. Um, you know, it gives you a chance to wear something which is more, much more lighter and much more flexible than we would normally have. That's beautiful. And but, you, would, you would hand sew this together just with that border Yeah, that's just um, the sole, it's the same... Um, uh, welting thread? Yeah, it's the same, it's a welting thread, but it's a very light welting thread. I think this is three cords, three cords of thread, and it's a clear wax, so um, it's got no stain on the wax, so it's just a clear wax, three cords. A gorgeous shoe. Yeah. I mean, this, so, uh, this would be a gorgeous women's shoe too, I mean. Yeah, it would be, I mean, it's the color, but I think, uh, you know, I think a sky blue pigskin yeah. as a man. Why not? Gosh, I could take one of each. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like I need to book my, book my vacation yeah. in the Bahamas. Yeah. But you yeah. see, this is just a, you know, it's just about thinking about in the bespoke processes, you can actually have anything made yeah. that you want, really. And I mean, again, you're right, Kirby, these are not your first Unfortunately, they don't have pairs. my name on the bottom of this. No, exactly. That's mm. not your last. Don't. I don't think you'd ever squeeze into that yeah. last. I'm it's afraid. not yours either, I don't it's think. It's not mine. No, there's no so way I'm going to be lucky wearing this. Yes, no, that's just a size eight don't sample. That's <laughs> a size eight sample that just happens to fit luckily in luckily the bag. In there. I mean, I really so, like the idea of, again, you know, of dressing properly, of kind of bespoke lifestyle. I mean, so many, many, I think people start dressing well professionally and going to work, right? That's the easiest entry point. Yeah. It's where people feel the most comfortable. It's why I always recommend a black cap to Oxford as being your first pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Because if you're really going to start dressing up and standing out, doing it at work is the easiest and most obvious mm -hmm. first place to begin. But I think that once you become comfortable in a suit and tie or uh, dressing up, is extending that to, you know, evening wear, to weekend wear, you know, and just, you know, always being with the jacket and trousers as yeah. opposed to shorts and a t-shirt or jeans, yeah. you know, and an untucked shirt. And, uh, you know, these shoes, you know, really just kind of remind me of kind of the old, you know, even some of the old Ian Fleming, yeah. James Bond stuff. And, exactly. you know, that, you know, whenever you were traveling, you know, even if you were in the tropics, mm. you know, you would have, you know, a nicely tailored suit, of course, made in different fabric than what you'd wear in New York in January. But, uh, but you'd still be dressed up. You'd still be mm -hmm. wearing proper clothing. You'd have a nice, fine pair of footwear. And it would all work together. Yeah. It's the idea of bespoke and it's the idea of style, you know, yeah. and it's that idea of elegance. And mm -hmm. actually, you know, you might be at the pool, but you need to be wearing some nice, you know, we can't all wear flip flops yeah. all day long. You yeah. need to actually have a nice pair of shoes. Yeah. At the pool. I mean, if you're going on the boat, the Queen Elizabeth across the Atlantic, you're not at the pool in your flip flops. No. Yes. You know, my goodness, slipping a martini. No way. Yes. That's the horror of that. The one. horror. Yes. Well, I actually have a... Um, you know, one of my first um, suits, bespoke suits, Chris made for me was a, a, a beautiful brown fresco patch pockets, you know, with a beautiful kind of patch uh, breast pocket. And unfortunately, I blew the trousers out somehow, mm -hmm. quite significantly, just through wear. You know, I've had them so long. It's such as a, a suit I've had for such a long time. It got so much use. And so I'm actually having, in order to patch the seat, I'm having them cut into shorts. Because why not, right? You know? Yeah, and Great. so you know something like that, a pair of shoes like this, yeah, you know, would, uh, yeah. would be beautiful. Very elegant. Yeah. So one of the things I love is that you know there's never a shoemaker in London that is uh, has as many interesting models as you mm -hmm. travel around with. I mean, the last set you showed me were incredibly interesting, and these are equally inspired. So it's mm -hmm. always so much fun to to see these shoes that. Um, you know, really aren't represented in anyone's model range, even yeah. bespoke sample models. I mean, I've, and I've seen a lot of bespoke shoemakers. Yeah. You know, and you know, you see the London city stuff, but very rarely do you see this more interesting kind of light, you know, filling out the lifestyle. Yeah, and I think that's important. You know, I think as a, a shoemaker going forward, it's about filling up the lifestyle. It's about yeah. 
maybe making riding boots. Yeah. It's about making house slippers. You yeah. know, people used to live a bespoke lifestyle, yeah. and they used to have a range. They'd have a shooting boot made. Mm -hmm. They'd have a riding boot made. And They'd you specialise in boots too, don't boots, you? Boots, yeah. So yeah. we'll do some, uh, you know, for the trunk show, we'll have a few pairs of riding boots yeah. on there as well. But I think it's really caring for that bespoke lifestyle, you know, or that bespoke philosophy to the entire lifestyle that, you know, really just makes it fun. And, you know, as a shoemaker, I mean, uh, Again, there's only so many pair of uh, cap toes that you can buy. I mean, once you have four or five cap toes, you know, some black cap toes, some semi brogues, um, you know, I mean, once you have a few of those, yeah, you where do you go say, from that? Well, and actually, you get your casuals organized once yeah. you've got your casuals in as well. Yeah, so I mean, if I were to think about it, it'd be, you know, probably five to eight pairs of cap toe Oxfords, maybe mm -hmm. a pair of Darbys, you know, a few casuals. You, know, you could probably yeah. have five to eight pairs of casuals, casuals five to yeah, ten. Five, um, slip -ons. And uh, but then once you once you hit the mark of twenty bespoke shoes, yeah. which is a lot of yeah. bespoke shoes. I mean, it's hard to imagine ever getting there. But once you hit that mark, I mean, this is uh, this yep. is where you take a customer. You say, okay, yep. well now the that same. you've well, you need your bespoke now that you've gotten your boats, basics you, done, yeah. let's start having some fun. Exactly, exactly. So that's part of uh, the joy of being a shoemaker is actually thinking about these ideas and thinking about maybe some colours and some textures that people wouldn't normally wear. But it's kind of okay for men to And part of the deal with these things. is that you do the fittings actually in the tropics, right? Yeah. You'll go down there. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I get to travel as well. Yeah. yeah, happy days. Yeah. Hey, well, Dominic, you know, thank you so much for coming to Dallas. And it's always a pleasure to see you. Uh, the shoes are fantastic. And, uh, you know, you've given me some ideas to think about you. I'm celebrating my 10th wedding anniversary, hopefully somewhere in the Bahamas next year. And uh, maybe I need a proper pair of shoes to go with that. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting. We look forward to that. We look forward <laughs> yeah. to making those. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Kirby. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. In today's video, I'm wearing a bespoke Chris Despis, a tan suit, single-breasted, with tab trousers, and a new Kirby Allison Sovereign Grade Macclesfield tie, a beautiful silk print. What I love about our Sovereign Grade ties is not only do they have a great hand, but they also tie just a beautiful knot with a perfect dimple. I'm wearing a blue Seminole Godard pocket square, tan, sovereign grade, small dot melange dress socks, and of course, my brand new pair of bespoke Dominique Casey brown semi brogues. My watch is a Chopard perpetual calendar with a retrograde date and a tan lizard strap from Jean Rousseau.